Well, good morning. Welcome to day five. In fact, this is the morning after day five, and we've had a lovely warm evening. So yesterday, the team concluded the installation of the heat pump. Um, it's been running now for approximately about 20 hours. Uh, the house is lovely and warm. We're at about 22 degrees. We've got it slightly high at the moment, just letting the sort of thermal mass of the house heat up. But let me take you around and show you how it's all set up. So here's the unit itself. Um, it's currently running. Now I'm stood one meter away. I'm gonna crouch down so I'm exactly one meter away from there. That's the fan running and it's running quite fast. So it's not loud. Um, in fact, once you get more than about two meters away from the device, it's pretty hard to, uh, to hear it. But the one thing you will notice is it's very cold in front of that unit. So to show that, what I've actually got here is a thermal camera. Now I'm gonna bring that up in front of the camera there so you can see. Now if I pan down, look at the dark blue right in front of that, uh, that unit there. So that's showing that the temperature at the center of the camera is about six and a half degrees. Now if I just pan up into the warm there, you'll see it immediately jumps up to about eight degrees. So the air coming out the front of that heat pump is at least two degrees colder than ambient temperature. That just shows it's working. Now again, if I pull up with a heat pump, you can see that those are the insulated pipes. So they are insulated, but obviously they're not 100% insulated. But when you put your hand on them, it's very difficult to actually uh, to tell. I mean, they're running at about nine degrees. Ambient temperature is about eight degrees at the moment. So let's take a look down the back and you can see how it's all set up, all insulated. So as I say, here's the, uh, the pipes that run down. You can see there, they go straight into the back of the unit. There are no gaps whatsoever. If I run up here to the handles, uh, they don't feel warm. They're about one degree hotter than ambient temperature. But again, all the way up there as we go into the attic. Now, one question you might have is, why is there a copper pipe there that's not insulated? Well, again, if we pan right back down, come down, you'll see there that goes to just a little cage. This is the overflow. Should anything go wrong with the system, because obviously it's a pressurized cylinder, you don't want pressurized cylinder just pumping pressurized water onto the first floor of your house. So what this does is there is a, a, a pump that's in the base there. If something starts to come out, a float valve will kick in. It will turn that pump on and it will pump the water um, directly out of the cylinder down to the ground level and obviously get rid of it outside of the house. Before we head around to the other side of the house, let's uh, take a quick look at the consumer panel. So here we have um, obviously all the electrics. This is where the entire system um, is set up from. So you can see there we've got uh, three breakers. One is the D2 pump that I was just talking about. One is the booster heater and one is the, the breaker for the air source heat pump. And we actually have three blanks in there. And I'd ask them deliberately to put in a slightly bigger box because I will be putting in a uh, energy monitoring device. Now there is energy monitoring built into the app for the heat pump, but I want to integrate it into my own home assistant energy monitoring system. So we'll be putting an energy monitor in there in the next week or so. So not much different around here. The only thing now is obviously the uh, distribution panel is live. Now I've deliberately unlocked this, but you can see here, this is the main breaker, so we can turn off everything that's on the other side of the house from here. Um, we'll be getting a, a lock on that later today. Now, we've still got to wait for the builder to come and take this out and brick up the hole. So uh, we've still got a big towel pushed into the hole right now just to stop any heat from escaping. So that's everything outside. Let's head inside and have a look at uh, how they've left the system. Here's our thermostat. We're currently set to 22 degrees. As I say, normally we'd probably run this at 20, 21 degrees. Because right now, with the house having been cold for four or five days, we're heating up the thermal mass. Now, one of the things that um, I, didn't, I wasn't used to with my old radiators, they were red hot to the touch. 
the radiators now are warm, they're not uncomfortable to touch, uh, and for the first few hours I was like, is there any actual heat in them? So they heat up slowly, that's something if you're going to get an air source heat pump installed, be prepared for. They're going to take a few hours to come up and you'll touch them and you think, they're not heating, they're not heating. They are, but they're heating slowly, and that's why you need bigger radiators. But let's spin the camera around for a second, and let's power up my thermal camera again. So, there's my radiator, and as you can see there, the center of that shot is roughly 32 degrees. And given we've got our flow temperature set at 33 degrees, that's pretty good. So as you can see there, the, the thermal mass of the building is, is starting to heat up, so the walls behind there are all starting to heat up. But uh, we've still got a little way to go till the house is, is fully running at the temperature that we want. So if we take a look in the airing cupboard, you'll see not much change, but everything is now lagged. All the pipe work has its insulation in place. And uh, other than the copper pipe there, which is part of that discharge pump that we talked about earlier, the MMI is now live. So we can see here all the different temperatures. Uh, the fact it's nine degrees outside and we're creating heat from nine degrees and we're bringing our house temperature up to a nice 21, 22 degrees. So again, really nicely done, all nicely lagged, cable clipped, really can't fault the team for their work. Heading up into the attic, hopefully for the last time this year, or maybe not, we've got to get the Christmas tree out later. But again, you can see all the pipe work nicely lagged, making sure that uh, there's no heat loss up here. That one little piece that you can see there that isn't lagged is something that I'll be taking care of today. That was something we did last minute to uh, just improve the water supply to one of the showers. Volumizer is up and running, nice and warm. All of the cabling you can see there on the back wall, all nicely clipped to the wall. Again, no loose cables lying everywhere. So that's it. We're up and running. The house is at a nice temperature. In fact, it's too warm in here to be wearing a jacket. Um, so the house is at a nice, consistent 21, 22 degrees right now. Um, we're going to let that run all day to try and bring up that thermal mass temperature and then we'll start to regulate it down a little bit because it's a little warm for my levels. Uh, my wife certainly likes the, the, the slightly warmer temperatures. Now I've got a lot of reading to do. Um, the system came with a lot of paperwork. Um, actually one of these is an installation manual but I've got to digest the owner's manual over the next, uh, next few days. Once we've had the system running for a week or so, I'll give you a much more detailed view on energy use and how much power it's using. Um, a quick look in the Daikin app, which I'll pop up on the screen right now, showed last night we were running at about one kilowatt per hour. And uh, you know that's almost negligible. And that includes the normal 500 watts of base load that my house normally takes um, through the night. So uh, it looks like it's going to be re relatively re energy efficient. Obviously, we'll wait for some really cold days just to see how hard it has to work to keep the house at a nice steady 21 degrees. And I, looking at the weather forecast, we probably won't have to wait too long because we're in for a bit of a cold snap next week. So I'll report back once I have better figures. Now, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things we're going to be doing is installing a whole bunch of uh, Shelly energy monitors. I've got a couple of EM50s here, and I've got a 3EM to go into the main fuse box. They'll be going in in the next week, and that will give us a much more granular view of what's using, what's using power during, in the house, um, rather than just a generic figure that we get from our current system. So looking forward to getting those installed, and uh, once I get them up and running, I will obviously share the data. Four and a half days, we're up and running. Hello, Yogi. Um, the team from Octopus have been fantastic. We've had very little issues. Um, like I said, the wrong tank got delivered and we're still waiting for that to be picked up. Uh, one of the radiators was damaged. A new one of those will be here next week and be swapped out. And we just need a little bit of brickwork done to block up the old flu. But other than that, they said five days. They were done by lunchtime on day five and can't fault them. They were amazing. Um, we had anywhere between so we had two people on the first day. I think the maximum we had on site at one point was six people. And uh, I just want to say a huge thank you to the team because not only did we have the six people from Octopus here, um, I also had 
uh, tilers in my conservatory and another plumber who was doing the work that Octopus couldn't do, which was changing out the shower processor units. Um, so yeah, we had about nine people in the house at, at that time. And um, yeah, the dogs, the dogs have been great. Um, there's Yogi behind me there. They've, uh, they've, they've loved having all these people around, all the attention, all the cuddles. And <laughs> thanks, Yogi. Come on, stop, 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 stop. Yogi likes to be involved in just about anything that's going on. So I just want to thank you all for watching these videos and uh, subscribing to the channel. Um, this is not the end of the journey. This is just the beginning. So a lot more content to come around the heat pump, solar panels, batteries, and other interesting projects that I've got lined up for the next few months. Hopefully this has been interesting. If it has, do hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you back here real soon for another video. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.